It may be 25 degrees outside, but warmer temps are coming. So let's work on the 5,000 mile maintenance. Get the bike ready to ride. Hi, my name is Joe. I love motorcycles, travel, and talking about how amazing life is. So if you like any one of those things, go ahead and click on that subscribe button. And that bell icon down there, that's so you know when I upload videos just like this. Go ahead and click on that. Now this is part one in the 5,000 mile maintenance service series. I'm technically doing the 15,000 mile service, but the 5,000 and the 15,000 mile service intervals are the exact same for all sporties. There's one exception to this, and I will mention this at the beginning of each episode in the series. Because the 1200 Custom has spoke rims, you will need to check and adjust the spoke torque on the front and rear wheels. As I'm doing the 15,000 mile maintenance, with that one exception with the 1200 Custom, I will be demonstrating the 5,000 mile maintenance. So during this episode, the items we're gonna be servicing are check the operation of the electrical equipment and switches. We're gonna check the front tire pressure, and then we're gonna inspect the thread. We're gonna inspect the front brake fluid sight glass, and then we're gonna check, adjust, and lubricate the throttle controls. So let's get started. So checking the operation of the electrical equipment and switches is pretty easy. You just turn the bike on, make sure your lights are lighting up, and you test the right signal, test the left signal, high beams, Low beams, horn, Beep. ooh, that's loud in the garage, and your hazards, and then you do the same thing in back. Hazards are working great. Rear right turn signal, rear left turn signal. And everything's looking great. So checking your tire pressure on the front and rear are pretty easy. So for the Iron 883 models, it should be 30 PSI in the front, and 40 PSI in the rear. Inspecting your thread is pretty easy too. You can use two methods. One, you can use a penny, Abe Lincoln's head, turn him upside down, put him into the tread. If the tread is below the top of his head, you need to change your tires. The better way to do it is get one of those tools that actually measures the tread depth. If your tread depth is 1 of an inch or 0.8 millimeters, it's time to change your tires. But if you keep up with it during these intervals, you should have no trouble checking your tires and doing it well before then. Now I have the Battlecruise H50s on my Harley Iron 883 and I put these tires on before I started the Route 66 trip, which was around 4,500 miles. And I put on about 2,000 miles before the trip too on these tires. So I'm at about nearly 7,000 miles probably on these tires. My Michelin Scorchers that I had on here before lasted about 11,000 clicks. Right now, I'm not even gonna measure the tread depth because I know these tires are still good. All right, let's go ahead and check the tire pressure here quick. Again, in the front, should be 30. And we're a little bit low, we're at about 28. So we're gonna put a little bit of air in there. I do have an air compressor, but I think it's kind of silly to pull out an air compressor, plug it in, put it onto the tire valve and then fill just a couple of pounds of pressure. It's just so much easier for me to grab a bicycle pump and just pump a little bit of air in there. So that's what I'm gonna do now. And we got a little bit too much in there so I'm gonna let a little bit out. So yeah, that was just 15 pumps and I went about five PSI too high. And we're right at 30. And we'll go ahead and do the same thing in the rear. We'll put it at 40. I'm not gonna make you watch that though. You pretty much know how to do this. Now to check the front brake fluid sight glass, it's a pretty easy process, but you gotta have the bike level. So I'm gonna start with that. Now some viewers have asked me where I got this lift from. It's just one of those cheapy ones from Harbor Freight. I think they're available at Amazon too. If I can find the link, I'll go ahead and put it in the description. Now you don't need the bike lifted, you just need it level and the handlebars level and straight. Because you're gonna inspect this sight glass here and all it requires is a little light shining into the sight glass here. And there's a little level line here. You just need the fluid inside this master cylinder here to be above that low mark line. So you take your light, you shine it into the reservoir and if you see it above that line, you're good to go. And hopefully you can see that that's the case for this one. 
All right, so next we need to check, adjust, and lubricate the throttle cables. We're just gonna jump right into lubricating them because they need them. They haven't had them since the 10,000 mile maintenance that I did. So we're gonna lubricate them and then adjust them. And during this entire process, we are going to check the throttle cables themselves. We're gonna make sure there's no ends that are frayed or any of the wires coming loose. If that's the case, we're gonna to need to replace the throttle cables. So to start, we're gonna loosen the jam nut here. You don't need to loosen it too much, just enough to have a little bit of movement in there. Then we're gonna take down the rubber boots here. Next, I'm gonna loosen these jam nuts here. You can either use two 10 millimeter wrenches or two 3 8 I just so happen to have a 10 millimeter and a 3 8 but you need them to be the same size to get these nuts loose. And once you get the nut loose, you slide them down and then go ahead and slide down the top part of the jam nut to loosen everything up. Now everything is loosey goosey. Next week we're gonna remove the top cover here so we can get the throttle cables out so we can lubricate. And to do so to start, T25 on the top. And on bottom here there's another bolt. It's in also a T25. And as you can see the top cover is starting to come loose. Don't lose anything. Make sure you know where your bolts go. And you can see here, top cover comes off easily. Next, we need to remove these brass ferrules that are in here so we can have the throttle cable slide out. Now, a lot of guys use a pick to get these out. I'm just gonna use a flathead jeweler or a screwdriver. I think that's what these are called. Usually works for me pretty well. Now, you wanna be careful with this. You don't wanna lose these brass ferrules. They're small. <laughs> They're easy to fling out. They're very expensive to replace. Now I nearly lost one the last time I did this. It flew off of the cable, nearly over the handlebars, but landed right here in this little spot here. You don't want to lose these, be careful. So next we need to pull out the housing and the throttle cables so we can go ahead and lubricate them. It's a pretty easy process, but the first time you do it, you might think you're gonna break it. Just give it a little bit of force and pull it right out. Now that I have the cables pulled out of the housing, I'm gonna go ahead and twist up the cable adjusters and the stop nut so I can have access to the ends here so I can lube up the throttle cables, and I'll do it on both. So let's talk about lubricant I'm using. Any Teflon-based lubricant will really do the trick. I'm just using chain and cable lubricant. This, this is something that I use on my own bicycles, and I've used these on wenches when they've gotten a little bit tight, but these can be used on a lot of different things that have moving pieces. What you don't want to use is WD-40. WD-40 is actually a solvent. It is not a lubricant. It can act as a lubricant because what it does is it separates out dirt and grime from whatever you put it on but it's technically a solvent and not a lubricant. You want to use a lubricant. So I'll just be using this right now. Look for any Teflon-based lubricant and that'll do the trick. Now there's two school of thoughts on how to go about doing this, the mechanism of it. The first one is you just grab a rag and you wrap a towel around it so you can kind of try and stay clean around it. You grab your sprayer, you put the hose through there and you hope you get it down there. Probably want to stand up a little bit so you're not fighting gravity and then you, once you spray, you kind of move the throttle cable up and down and hope that you get it all in there. I prefer a different method and it's using this tool here. This is a cable luber and it's got a large hole on one end and it closes off or a small hole on the other end. So what you do is you take the large end and you put it on the end where the stop nut is, like so, and you let the cable end squeeze out of the small end and you tighten it up. Now there's a couple of different holes here. The first one, it's right here. And then there's one in front. You can use either hole to spray your nozzle in there. And I'll still use my rag. While this is less messy than the other method, it's not foolproof. You're still gonna get a little bit of lubricant all over. But you still wanna stand up so gravity's still your friend and you go ahead and give it a spray. And if it's not squirting all over the place, you know it's doing the trick. 
And what I like to do, I like to know that I've gotten it throughout the housing. So if you start seeing lubricant come out by the cam stop here, you know you've done your job. It may seem like a little bit too much here, but you just clean it up well enough, you'll be fine. I much rather know that the lubricant got all the way down than, than guess that it has or has not. And we'll do the same thing to the other one. Now that we have everything all lubed up, we're gonna go ahead and button everything up and then do the cable adjustments. I'll start just kind of twisting on the adjustment nuts here. I'm not gonna tighten them the whole way, just enough just to get them on there so they're not falling off. Here's a common mistake or some confusion some guys have. You took them out, you forgot which one goes where and which one is which. First of all, I'll say the idle cable goes in the rear and the throttle cable goes in the front. Now, to figure out which one is which, if you didn't label them or if you didn't set them down and figure out which one was which, really easy way to figure this out. Go ahead and pull on it. If you pull on it and there's no movement at the cam stop, that means that is the idle cable. If you pull on it and there's movement at the cam stop, that means it's the throttle. So I'll go ahead and put the throttle in the front and the idle in the rear. So that's my idle, that's my throttle. Start with the idle. And then the throttle cable. And then we'll go ahead and put the brass ferrules back in. All right, now that we have the cables in place, we'll go ahead and put the housing on. Again, both top and bottom are T25 Torx. Now I've tightened these bolts often enough that I feel confident that I don't need to grab a Torx wrench to tighten these up and torque them to spec. If you don't have the same confidence in this that I do, go ahead and grab an inch pounds torque wrench and tighten it to 35 to 45 inch pounds. Adjusting your throttle cables is a pretty easy process. There's just a few things you gotta know about while doing it. There is the throttle cable and the idle cable. So if we go down by our cam, we can see that there's two stops that one that you just heard click right here, when I pull on the throttle, that's one stop. That's when you have the idle at rest. And then you pull on full, and there's another stop up here. So when you pull on full throttle, that is when the throttle cable is being pulled here. When you release it, the idle cable, which is up in here, that's when that one's at rest. So how do you adjust this? You wanna make sure you're touching each stop. So you pull the throttle on full, and to do that, you're gonna to wanna to adjust the throttle cable. As I'm tightening this, the throttle cable is tightening. And it's getting closer to that top cam stop. We've just about hit it. All right, now we're touching there. Now we wanna make sure the idle cable is still tight enough, but still, touching this cam stop there. So we'll just tighten this a little bit till that idle cable gets tight. You can see it tightening up there a little bit and we'll watch for it to pull away from that cam a little bit, if it does at all. You don't want it too tight so the throttle sticks like it does now. So we'll go ahead and loosen that idle cable a little bit until the throttle releases. There, now we've released. Now we're going from stop to stop. It's touching this one here and this one up here. And all the while I'm doing this, I'm keeping my handlebars straight. That's why you gotta have the bike lifted, have the handlebars straight. Now we wanna make sure that it still works when we go from full stop to full stop. So I'm gonna pull full right and then do the same process. So I'm full lock right now, and as you can see, the throttle's sticking. So what I'll do is I'll loosen the idle cable. There we go. And now I'll go full lock left. And do the same thing. And that's good. Back to center, test it out. That's good. And back to right. We're good. 
And lastly, we'll tighten up the stop nuts here against the adjusters. And we'll grab our 10 millimeter and 3 8 and tighten them both up. There's no torque spec for this. Just don't go nuts with them. Just tighten them up enough so they stay. So that wraps up part one of the 5K service series. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and click on that like button. And so you know when the rest of the series is coming, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and that bell icon so you know when the next videos are released. If you haven't had your fix yet, there's a couple of videos over here. Thanks for watching, ride safe everybody, and keep your wheels rolling in the right direction. I'll see you in the next video.